Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest. Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, is a game designed by Paolo Mori, republished by Stonemaier Games, plays one to six players in, what's this say, um, 60 minutes, probably if you're playing a full player count. And effectively what you're doing in this is you are taking on the role of a pirate crew, and you are trying to get aboard one of these islands. There's a calm island, there's a stormy island. You're trying to collect loot tokens to ultimately score a pile of doubloons, which translates into points at the end of the game. You're gonna play the game over three different voyages. Each voyage is gonna have a different day length. First voyage is gonna be four, second is gonna be five, third is gonna be six. At the end of all that, whoever has the most points on their score tracker is the winner. There's a little more to it than that, but that's a quick and dirty overview. Let's go down the table, check it out. All right, so here's a game of Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, all set up for three players. So to set up, you're gonna lay the board out in the middle of the table either on the calm weather side or the bad weather side, which is basically just gonna change the abilities of the loot and it's gonna have different art, be a darker like stormy art. Then you're gonna put all the reputation tokens for all six colors out, no matter how many people you're playing with, randomly, which I've done. You're gonna put loot tokens from the bag based on the number of players, unless you're playing a two player game, you put three, but in anything else, you put the number of players of loot tokens out, which I've done. For the first voyage, there's going to be day one, two, three, and four. Voyage two will be through day five, and voyage three will be through day six. Then each player is going to get their own score tracker, graveyard, and deck of cards of 40 cards in their color. One player is going to shuffle, so in this case that was green. They're going to shuffle their cards, and they're going to flip six. Every player is then going to find those six cards in their deck, and they are going to get them out. And those are going to be the cards they play with. So in this case, these are the six cards we picked. We picked the Innkeeper, which has a daytime ability, which we'll go into more when we play. But you're going to get to choose a character in your ship and return them to your hand. That'll make sense later. The Barkeep is number eight. They have a nighttime ability, gain one coin. They also have an end of voyage ability. The Brute only has a daytime ability. We'll talk about all that when we play it. Infantry has a daytime ability. The Merchant, daytime ability, trade some loot tokens for some coins and the captain daytime ability. So then take all these cards and you're ready to play. So on your turn, everyone's going to pick a card, play it face down up here in these spots, and then uh, you're going to resolve them from low number to high number, daytime abilities, from high number to low number, dusk abilities, and then we're gonna take loot tokens from high to low. That's what we're trying to do. Different loot tokens. There are chests, which aren't out here now, but they're yellow with the chest. They're worth five, five doubloons. The hook is gonna let me keep a character in my ship for the next voyage or gain two coins. The barrel, this one, I can either, uh, when I have it, I'll gain a reputation at dusk and I'm gonna get a coin. Saber is going to let me discard another player's character from the island. So let me boot somebody else's character off the island. Relic, at the end of the voyage, lose three points. Amulet, at the end of the voyage, gain three points. And Maps, if you have two, you get seven. If you have three, you get 12. So that's what we're trying to collect. All right, so let's go ahead and play. I'm gonna play as the green player, and then I'm gonna shuffle each of these other cards and just kind of randomly play them so it kind of simulates three players playing. So let's see, what do I want? Oh, I'm green, I'm green. I'm going to try to play this. I'm going to play the infantry. When I play this, if it's the highest character, so the rightmost character in the island, I gain five. So I'm going to try to think that no one else is going to play higher than that this round. So we'll see. So I put that there. They'll shuffle. Again, these people would just, players would actually pick the card they want to play. But just to simulate that, I'm going to shuffle and randomly flip. Done. All right, then everybody's played. 
So we are going to flip the cards and arrange them. Ah, oh, the merchant. All right, so we have the brute. Oh, this is gonna work out all right. All right, the brute, the infantry, and the merchant. All right, so what happens now is, starting with lowest to highest, we're gonna activate sun abilities. So, brute. Discard the rightmost character on the island, which may be the brute, that character's owner gains one reputation. So, the purple character gets punched. This goes to the graveyard. And then purple will get one reputation. This is basically a tiebreaker, and it's gonna tell you how much money you get at the beginning of the round. That's why all these characters have some doubloons. Then, we're gonna to go to the infantry. If this infantry is the rightmost character on the island, which it is, gain five doubloons. So green gets five doubloons. Then, going in high to low order, we're going to take some loot. So, I'm going to take the amulet, because it's worth three. The barrel's only worth one, and I don't care about reputation so much right now, so I'll take that. Take my card back, put them in my ship. Ship just means face up in front of you, so I'll try to do it like this, so we can at least see it a little bit. Let's get these out of the way. Okay, then red, they would take this one because that's the best one. And they have it at dusk. They will also get a reputation. I believe that's how that one works. Uh, so red gets a reputation. All right, and that's it. This one, no one took it, so it goes away. Then we do day two, same thing. All right, so I'm going to... What color am I? I'm green. Oh, then if any character was still alive or on your ship and they had a moon, they would activate, but there aren't any of those. So let's keep going. I don't think there are any moon characters. Yeah, I'm going to play the barkeep. So the barkeep is a moon character, so she'll fire after um, daytime. So we'll play that. They'll play this. They'll play this. All right, now we flip. So we got a captain and a captain and a barkeep. All right, so the captain turn order here is broken by reputation. So red has a higher reputation, so they fire off last. All right, so I have the barkeep, no daytime ability, so they skip, go to this one. Red, advance to the rightmost space on the reputation track, lose one for each position gained in this way. So we'll go one, two, three. So we'll lose three bucks, but now we're highest reputation. So red loses three. All right, then we're gonna go to purple. They're gonna do the same thing. One, two, so they'll lose two bucks. All right, so that was that. Now, we're gonna get booty, starting with purple. Purple is going to, ooh, let's see. Uh, they're gonna take a map. So purple, keep this character here. They're gonna take a map. Then red will, where did I take that? Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong space, a map. Then red will, they'll take the hook. Just put them like that. Unless you need to see the numbers, you can, if you have a moon, you can splay them out so you can see them. I'm just doing this for table space. And I have the saber. The saber is going to discard another player's dis character from the island which i was the last person so the saber is worthless for me nobody else is left on the island all right so that's that that's day two now we're going on to day three same thing i'll pick a card uh, i'm gonna play i'm gonna play the brute and we'll see what happens with the brute all right so they'll do this one and they'll do this one. Then we flip. All right, so they'll be this order. All right, so innkeeper. Red played the innkeeper. Choose a character in your ship and return them to your hand. I think they're gonna keep, uh, they're gonna take the brute back. So red's putting the brute back in their hand. Oh, that's purple. Oh yeah, red's over here. So brute was going back. All right. So I'm gonna reshuffle because I don't want to uh, 
just play the brood again, so we'll reshuffle it. Okay. Then, um, Brute is going to punch the person on the right, which is purple. They'll die. They get a reputation, but they're highest up, so they get a coin. Not all terrible. Then green gets first dibs. Green is actually going to take this saber, and they're going to kill the innkeeper for red, discarded, because you get to discard another player's character from the island. And then this one is grit. And then after the last night, day two night, I should have gotten a coin because I had a moon. I'm the only player with a moon, but I forgot. All right, that was that. These get discarded, done. Now we're going on to the last day that I'll talk about what happens between rounds and we'll wrap this up. So let's shuffle these up again, just in case. Okay, there we go. All right, so back to this player. I'm gonna play the merchant because I wanna show you how that one works. And then they will play this, and they will play this. All right, and we flip. Oh, dang it. So the barkeep and the brute and the merchant, so annoying. All right, so the barkeep does nothing during day. The brute, during the day, discard the rightmost character. So the brute punches me, my merchant, but I get a reputation. All right, so the Brute gets to take a token. That's red. They're going to take the map because they don't want the other player to get it. Purple will take this. That doesn't do anything, so leave it. And I'm the only one with a moon again. Oh, they have a moon, so they get a buck. I get a buck. And then that's the end of the round. All right, so now what happens is we're going to look at all of our characters that have anchors. So this character has an anchor. Gain one additional for each of your barrel tokens. Have none. They have the same. They have none. This player has no anchors. Then what we're going to do is we're going to score all the loot that have anchors. So in this case, we have chest. No one has any chest. Hook. This player has a hook. So they can keep a character in their ship for the next turn that they have played. One of these. So they can leave that sitting out or gain two bucks. I think they're gonna take it and they're gonna gain two bucks. So we get rid of that, two bucks. Okay, then we'll do relics. No one has a relic. Amulets, I have an amulet, so I'll get three. Then we'll do maps. If anybody has two or more, you get seven. If you have three, you get 12, no one has that. So we're done. I skipped barrel on accident. So red has a barrel, so they will, they would have gotten a reputation, maybe more, and they'll get a coin. I always miss the reputation on those because it's odd, and those go away. So all the tokens go back away. Then, that's the end of the round. Then what you're going to do is, all the cards that you, you haven't played, they stay in your hand. All the cards that you have played go into your graveyard, so we'll do that. Then you're going to take your coins and you're going to put them, you're going to add them up and track them on here. So I have 5, 10, 15, 18, I have 20. So I'll do 20. I now have 20 coins. Then your coins go away, but you get however many you are on this board. So I'll keep 10. All the rest of them go away. This player does the same thing. What color are they? They're red. They will get seven to start. This purple player does the same thing. They'll keep eight. And then we're done. They would have adjusted their thing and all that. I'm just not doing that. Then what we would do is green would take six more cards. Flip them. Everybody would find these cards in their deck. So 9, 10, 31, 32, 33, and 23. We would take more loot out three loot for each day because it's three players. We're going through day five on voyages two. So we'll do that. Got some chest out this time. Then when everybody gets their cards, we pick up the cards and we'll be ready to go. So you'll play through day two just like we did our voyage two, just like we did voyage one. 
and then score. Then for Voyage 3, you play it through six days, still do six cards, all that. Score, whoever has the most points at the end of all that is the winner. And that's how you play Libertalia, Winds of Gale, Chris. Let's go to the top, see what you think about it. All right, well, that was Libertalia, Winds of Gale, Chris. So before we move any further, this is a reprinting, re-implementation of Libertalia, which we have on the shelf down there, which you can't see it. We've had the first edition. This video is not going to compare to the first edition. I'm not going to say if I like it better, if I like it less, any of that. This is strictly going to focus on this version of the game. We may have something covering the comparison later, but that's not what this video is about. So I just want to get that out. I'm not going to be comparing this version to that older version. Strictly what's in this box is what's being reviewed. Okay, so now let's get to this. So first thing I want to talk about in this one is components. Now, this is Stonemeyer. Stonemeyer knocks it out of the park with components. And I don't think this one is any exception to that. The loot tokens are amazing. I think this is called like Bakelite or something. They have the eye, the picture of what it is on it. So like barrel, hook, amulet, you know, all that kind of thing. They just look really nice. They're colorful. They're all different colors. They all have different symbols. So even if you're colorblind or you, color week, whatever, you'll be able to tell that's a barrel. It has a barrel on the board. You can match that up, which is really cool. Really nice components, no issue there. The reputation markers are cool. What are these octagons? Octagons and every, all the player colors. Um, nice wooden bits there. This score tracker is really neat. I like individual score trackers that are like this, so you turn it, adjust the score, you know, so you can see it and all that. Really nice. Um, my only issue with that is if you're playing with some people who may not be the most trustworthy, they could add some score because it's not as wide open as like a scoreboard. But again, don't play with those people. Uh, the decks of cards, everyone has the same deck of cards with 40 characters. They have your ship, your personal ship on the back. So this is green. That's also going to match your graveyard. Like I showed, you saw this part of the graveyard, but on the back, there's also one that has your ship. 40 characters ranging from 1 to 40. They all have different art. We'll show you some of the art that you didn't see. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some really cool, like what's anthropomorphic animals or like animals that are like people. That's what that means, I think. So all that stuff's really cool. Um, I Art is, you know, it's subjective. So I'm not going to go into that too much because it's art. Um, so either you like it or you don't. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. The coins, uh, they're in increments of one, three, and five, and they come in this cool little tray, which is nice. So you just throw them in there, and they fit in the box pretty nice. There's a bag for the tokens, or the loot tokens. The insert, let me see if I can grab that down here. The insert's really nice, Stonemaier fashion. It's got this cool plastic cover here. If I can take it off without making a ton of noise shaking stuff all the decks are going to fit in one of these compartments solo deck here there's a cover for the uh, coins which is cool Toke loot bag can go in there there's also one thing that I didn't show you but there are tiles for the calm side and the bad weather side so if you didn't like the hook for the calm and you wanted to play with the hook for the bad weather side, you can just tuck that on the board there, and now the hook does that, which is pretty cool. So no matter what side of the board you're playing on, you can have the effect that you want. And even if you're playing Automa, there's an Automa specific, because this has Automa solo, because it's Stonemeyer. There's four Automa specific tiles that you can play with if you want to, or if you're playing Automa. And there's also, which is pretty cool, I, don't, I would never do this, but you can make your own tile. So if I wanted the amulet to be worth 42 points, there I go. So yeah, that's cool. Um, my only issue is there's no player aid for the players. I mean, it's all on the board kind of, but it would, I don't know, maybe there could be some kind of player aid that tells you something. The board does a pretty good job, but it's always nice to know, hey, if I drop down below uh, the bottom of the reputation, I have to pay a coin. Yes, it's on the board, but it'd be nice to just see that on a player aid card or something, but I'm not gonna nitpick, that's silly. So this game, is great. I've liked the original one. This is the only thing I'm going to say. I like the original one. I like this one. So, um, 
yeah, I have no issues with this at all. Rule book's super short. I didn't show that, but the rule book is small. It's not a normal like square or it's actually like a book shape. How many pages is it? One, two, it's three pages of setup and three pages of rules, some publisher's notes, and then iconography on the back. So like a three page rule book, which is amazing. Um, no issues there. There's an Ottoman rule book as well, which is actually thicker than the regular one. I tried to play this as a solo player. I didn't love it. I play some solo games. I just feel like this is the type of game that it really shines with the player interaction. And just even just me flipping cards like I did in the overview doesn't really show how this game works because it's the players trying to outthink other players that really kind of makes this game shine. So Anima just didn't do it for me. But if you want to play solo, it's kind of neat. It's just I didn't dig it. But it might be your jam. So check that out if you want to. So I'm going to give this a BGM accepted seal. This is going to get a 7.5 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.75 out of 5 wrenches on an arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing. But what I take it with the games that we enjoy, and that's what I'm going to do. So that is Libertalia, Winds of Gale Crest from designer Palomori, published by Stonemeyer Games. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming. Mm -hmm.